Hello, I'm gonna let you all know this is going to be a two-parter, so, so sit tight. <laughs> Welcome to Film Study, an All-American Universe podcast with Lexi. I'm Lexi. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, rate the podcast five stars, all that good stuff, uh, and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Today, me and Kaya are talking about episode 514 of All-American, Make Me Proud. Uh, here it is. <laughs> Um, it's been a very busy week. Uh, if, if you all have watched my, my Twitter spaces and hopefully I'll drop that news. First of all, my Patreon and the Twitter spaces, um, and I'll drop that news hopefully at some point on, on YouTube and, 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 uh, Instagram, but we're not talking about that today. We're talking about make me proud, make me proud. <laughs> if you could rate this episode something out of 10, what would it be? I'm giving it a 20. <laughs> <laughs> and why? Just your overall general thoughts. Why is that? <laughs> oh my God. Okay. My I don't even think the audience heard that because it like it happened so fast. You like went away from the mic so excited. <laughs> Minus Jordala, I'll give it like a seven. 7.5 but with really yeah. but with some added I mean also well I mean it's Jordan's A story so I don't feel like you could take away <laughs> no I'm actually talking about them separate too away, oh away you're them. talking about Jordan separate yeah. okay um with everyone else I'm gonna give it a 7 7.5 for them but with Jor's storyline and then Lele girl putting two and two together things with Miko and Patience and then Jordan on top of that I'll give it maybe like a 1920. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I told someone, uh, I told someone that at the end of all of this, this might end up being one of my favorite grief episodes. I know we haven't gotten Spencer's episode yet. Don't come for me audience. Okay. But, uh, Rob, Rob Doty did, I think an amazing job. Um, Jess McCallan did an amazing job. And this is something I wanted to say up top. I haven't given my rating yet. It, it It's close to a 10. I don't ever be giving episodes 10s. I'm being so serious. Um, and it's not, and it's not because of Jordala, but it's because of this, um, even though I love them, don't get me wrong. I love them. But Adrian Dukes, another writer, said this said this line and I'm like it's so true grief isn't always loud and as someone who uh just like in my personal life is not sort of the most extroverted like the person that lets people know how she's feeling all of the time but is more sort of quiet in that and sort of sort of taking that in I so 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 loved Michael representing amongst these group of people like (laughs) Laura like like Laura reacted in a way that like none of us have seen her react before um she you know got angry for the first time etc 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 you know, I, what, what did I say back then? Like Monet said it was the first time she ever like yelled on Mm -hmm. set. Um, obviously Liv, we've seen Liv through her sobriety journey. Um, and so this wasn't necessarily new to us and we were seeing her grow and like recognize that she needed help. I think with Spencer, we've seen Spencer grieve and we haven't seen Spencer grieve quite like this, but we're also like, there's a part of this that's familiar with Spencer only because (laughs) what did Kia say? We'll get to it, but you're reverting back to your old self. Um, And so for Jordan, just this, you can't always have, like you need peaks and valleys in television and you need peaks and valleys in storytelling. And you can't always have this like over the top reaction. And I think, I, I, I just gotta say Michael did a wonderful, wonderful job showing like quiet 
quiet grief um so yeah that's that's why i rate it so highly but anyway getting into the getting into the episode getting into the episode um let's start with mika oh my god let's start with mika <laughs> that means not i didn't even say patience i said let's start with mika um yeah miko is stalking patients and how do we know she's stalking patients because she's showing up at lawson's cafe honey which i'm like don't let me <laughs> we need a new coffee shop please build them a new coffee they shop need to please bring back the other i one. beg i don't get it like <laughs> They're not bringing it back because uh, they don't. They're not in high school anymore. No, but I'm like, none of them live in Crenshaw. Literally, none of them live in Crenshaw anymore. Can't they keep the one that lived was over there with Lil Zay Zay? That's what I'm saying. They need to start shooting on location. They need to start shooting. I don't know. I know there's anyway. They need to start shooting at some it's other coffee spots softly. or just find something. <laughs> I need light. <laughs> Let there be light somewhere else. <laughs> Yo. It's just, I'm just so like, it's almost aggravating at this point. Only because, and I'll explain this like for a storytelling purpose. Anybody can go to Slauson's. Not to say anybody can go like go anywhere else. But it is very easy to get into Slauson's. And so you have patience. Like, this is her regular, usual place. Like, if y'all doing a storyline with a stalker. <laughs> <laughs> or just like, and not even a storyline with a stalker, but a storyline in which patience is famous. People are going to know that this is her regular play. I mean, they always there. <laughs> If patience, if you don't want to be left alone, like I beg of you, stop. Like, did I don't know. Like, Slauson's is not exclusive. Like, if people be acting like it is exclusive. They be having all these shows there. There's an open mic that. Like, why what? is Clay coming to? <laughs> why is Clay of Keating Records? Yeah, what? <laughs> coming to. It's like, why is Lele having to have her meetings up in Slauson's? I don't think she lives <laughs> Literally. in Beverly. I'm pretty sure the studio is in Beverly. Why are these meetings happening in Slauson's? I have no clue, but it's time to do away do better. with that set, bro. <laughs> it's time to do... <laughs> and I, look, the, writer, the writers will probably come for me for this one, but I'm like, tear down the Crenshaw sets. We don't need that. <laughs> Got us in an empty house. Like, what? Exactly. Don't even. Don't even get me started. <laughs> Could have saved the money and kept the hangout. Like, come on, man. So, uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway. Uh, Miko meets patients at Slauson's. Um, and I'll say this: I love when the writers do some sneaky messages in there because. Uh, what is it? What does it? And Miko said, even though she's crazy, right? She said, "Some stands love to hate," <laughs> and I said, "If that ain't the truth, <laughs> <laughs> because many, many an all American fan stan, I should say, talk about this show, and that is their right." But talk negatively about the show. Hardly, I think, any positive. Um, and still, and still, watch. <laughs> still be turning into views. <laughs> Look here. <laughs> it's a guilty pleasure. <laughs> uh, there you go. There you go. But I just love that. Love that line and love that reference. Um, also, so anyway, she goes to Slauson's, runs into Miko, who tells her that some of her old fans are not hyped for the video release, uh, and really, I think, primes her, obviously, Layla said it, said it later, later on, is that Miko has been getting into Patience's head about a lot, so she gets into her head about, you know, her old fans not being excited for this new thing. Um, <laughs> side note... 
I knew. <laughs> I knew with a surety that they were going to give patients one little line. <laughs> Wait, which one? Which one? <laughs> She was like, what did she say? She was like, damn, Layla is one lucky girl. Like, shut up! You should have been at that kitchen table. You should have been at that kitchen table. (laughs) But I digress. I digress. Um so anyway, yeah, so 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 basically ends up saying um that Miko has decided that the she came up with an idea that she would send patients a gift. Patients would give her a shout out on behalf of the what is it called? The patient zeros. <laughs> and I was like, okay, what? <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Before even going to what's the face? Because they oh my gosh, back in Swafans, they make me so sick. Yeah. When she was talking to Miko how originally she like tried to make it seem like she didn't see her even though she looked dead in the girl's face and then tried to walk away mm-hmm. when she's talking to her what the patient say she was like oh if you see anything else uh could you just i'm like girl because she just what you just was trying to avoid her you sat here and unfollowed her which is stupid you should have just blocked her because now she followed still- her back yes. because she was just like oh she was dming me i'm like girl what no, but the i heck? thought about that like, too what are you doing because I, th- I thought she followed her back which is why she d- uh dm's her but i think miko is still able to send her messages because patient said she just unfollowed her she didn't block her mm, so i feel like she could still true. get messages but i'm just like because she do what you want her to defend you even though think she's crazy she's psycho she's stalking you you know this and you unfollow the girl i was not taking it man oh and then when she was walking away she was like thanks i'll see you k why is she giving this girl false hope why she gonna see her later <laughs> i don't think here's the thing i don't think that she knows that she's stalking her i think that layla comes to find out that she's stalking her uh and i think layla they presented Layla as recognizing that Miko is more of a nuisance than, um, and sort of more nefarious than Patience has. Patience has been like, I think Patience is just taking it from, she's pointing out these like negative things about me. She really wants my attention. Like she seemed more annoyed in the other episode, but this episode, it really seemed like she, uh, was, like she just was not in a good headspace whenever Miko would communicate with her, and it's because she would point out something about being a fan of the old patients. That was that 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 was like an interesting bit of the story because I was just like, so we're making patients unaware. Gotcha. <laughs> See, I don't think she's that stupid. I feel like, and not even stalker to the degree of like a, like someone who really is a stalker. I feel like to her. If she sees this girl constantly DMing her or things like popping up online regarding her and this girl, whatever. And then um, fast forward to this week here where she walks in and she looks at her like that. Fast forward to this week here where she sees her and she looks at her. She's not trying to talk to her. I feel like on some level in Patience's mind, she feels like, yo, this girl's a creep. She, knows she feels like, it's, like she's a creep. You know, like, yeah, and also I say mm-hmm. stalker in a way where it's not to the max, but like, yo, this girl kind of stalking me in the sense that, like, why she keep popping up here at Slauson's, you know, like, I'm not trying to see like that. It's like light stalkerish, you know? I yeah, don't think she sees yeah. it to the full. But the, the, the thing is, is, I'm like, it's, it, and it's interesting because it's like maybe at one point she did feel that way. And now she's very much, I feel like she left this episode just thinking of her as like, someone that she has to continue to connect well, with now. especially because later on I was, I, yeah well yeah later on they're talking to Gia about it about the flowers and that she runs one of Patience's fan accounts and it has I want to say what like 28,000 mm-hmm. followers which I'm like oh that's not a slight that's not a slight following um and so that's just like oh no you have to now you have to engage with her because she runs your biggest fan account uh, later on at the video release, they find out that patient or no, 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 that Miko sent the flowers to their home address, um, and not to the studio, and that she signed it the the vortex. I cannot <laughs> love from the vortex. Dead that word right now. Tear down that word just like we're tearing Yo. down the Crenshaw set. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my 
gosh. So anyway, well, it's going to be interesting to follow this story uh, because we thought, we, didn't, um, didn't Sky give her this advice a Wait, long time ago? This, like, I'm like, I feel like this was an episode we should have had Sky or at least mentioned Sky in some way, shape, or form. Definitely. There was no, where is she? Definitely. Come on. And you got a whole video. We coming needed Sky on. back. I could not. Yeah, we needed, we definitely needed Sky back because it's just, I just, ugh, I wish if we were going to get this storyline where sort of Patience falls into this, this sort of trap of, you know, not, or let's say building up boundaries too late with Miko, I'm like, why did we, why did we get the advice from Sky? But you know, I got it. I, people got to learn lessons. People got to learn lessons, even though they're told advice. <laughs> So, um, that's, that's that, um, uh, side note, uh, the eerie music when, uh, when, when, pay, uh, when Layla and, uh, <laughs> Layla and Gia were talking about, were talking about the, the, uh, the flowers was hilarious. I, <laughs> I was like, what? It was building the suspense. <laughs> uh, that was so funny. I said, okay, Madonna though she's the the music supervisor of the show so i was just like that's really funny um so yeah we'll see how that goes we'll talk about that more in predictions spencer grace hasn't rented out the house so clearly she just said that to coop because she didn't she want, ain't want her staying stay up in that house yo. That? can we establish that because that house is sitting there i'm like why are people paying money why is spencer paying money i mean coop is living rent free why is spencer paying money to stay at a beach house when there's a house empty sitting over in crenshaw anyway spencer went to oakland for the week spencer went to oakland for the week and one of my first thoughts is did Grace notice nothing? I feel like we need to talk about that first. Did Grace notice nothing in this week that Spencer was in Crenshaw? You said this week here? Yeah, this week. This week. Did Grace notice anything with Spencer while Spencer was in? He spent a whole week in Oakland. And I know he didn't just turn off his grief i know he didn't just turn off his behavior within his grief because he was rude to kenny last week he who else was he rude to to alicia he was kind of off-putting to I mean, um, come back here say that again <laughs> i say because it's alicia <laughs> you don't want her <laughs> But what I'm saying is, like, do you think Grace noted? Like, I just kept watching this episode and watching Spencer's interactions, and I'm like, what? Like, what is Grace doing at this point in time? Because what is he doing? it feels like Spencer just got worse. I feel like, I feel like when he's here, everyone else in Beverly and in Crenshaw, like, they can clearly see what's going on with him because he's acting out in these ways towards them but he's also acting different than how they usually know him to be mama mama grace she's going on and off you know constantly so i feel like the week he was is she she's, she's, she's been here every, I said, I said, she's been here every off, step of the way and off she goes to oakland for like a day and she come back to crenshaw for like a week <laughs> talking <laughs> about something i have to set dylan up for no, oakland oh you haven't been said, doing that no, all season oh, <laughs> no she said she gotta finish uh finish up at crenshaw and then fin um finish in a and I was just like, what do you have to do at Crenshaw? No. You don't work there. Like, what? <laughs> How are you not finished at this point? Like, bruh, you got married like three months ago. Make it make sense, man. I cannot. <laughs> like, why are you commuting to work again? Number one, you never worked there. I think she was like a part of some like she was parent, the PTA. <laughs> like school. Exactly. exactly. Like, what are you doing? They didn't make it anything up for this lady to bring her back. Like, so now she Ooh, has to come it's back. It's so great. They said, oh, she got to drop her son off this week. So we're going to bring her back. No. I. Oh, my gosh. But I feel like legitimately up in Oakland, I think he was able to not even cover it up, but just to, yeah, well, to mask it in a way from his mom and them for a little bit because maybe he was going to the gym out there, going on runs and stuff, you know. But I feel like he wasn't put in a position where she was pressing him about Billy's death, you know, D'Angelo not doing it over there. Um, 
And I don't think at the mm-hmm. time, like, Lil Dill would have impressed on him like that either. So I think that's why he went to Oakland was just to get away. Dylan stays pressing Spencer. What are you talking about? <laughs> he's going to be pressing him coming up. But at the time when he's in Oakland, I don't feel like No, but I mean, like, late, like earlier in the seasons, Dylan has always been the first to be like, oh, you think you big Tom now? <laughs> Oh, you think you picked his dad? Have some respect in regards to losing Billy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like Dylan's pressing Ooh. him that much right no, now you. because he lost Billy. You. you know, I think they're all just I agree. treading lightly around him. Well, his mom, D'Angelo, and Lil Dill because they don't see him that often. So when he's around, you know, we want to make him feel comfortable. We just want to let him relax. We know he just lost someone important to him. Um, Give them that backstory. I love this. Go ahead. <laughs> Better come through, actress. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, continue. That was my man. Go, go ahead. I'm now being back, I feel like that's weird, which is why we're going to see Lil Dill calling him out and everything because he's back where he can't mask it around these people. You know, he's back where him and Billy made this connection at. So I think it's when he was in Oakland, it was a lot easier for him. But with him being back now, it's a lot more noticeable and it's harder for him to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. And I do recognize, um, I do recognize that Grace said something about, you know, I was cool with you coming for the week or she said something small to Spencer, but I just did. I was just like, that's not enough. <laughs> You'll be doing enough. Be a parent this time. Be a parent this time. <laughs> okay. oh and I don't know. It's like, even in like he sees a one, I feel like she, anyway, let me, that's a whole different conversation. So, um, anyway, she said that she needed help around the school, so he comes, runs into our face. Girl, she looks so runs good. Runs into Kia. Oh my gosh. Welcome back, Kia. That fit. That fit. <laughs> Look, Asia just has a way of, like, I don't know, bringing a normalcy bringing a normalcy to the show and she's just she's always a breath of fresh air to the show and not to say like the show like needs a breath of fresh air but it's always just like every time she's here it feels like she belongs here you know what i mean just for like a week is she still over there what is it chicago med or was she only here for- no she's not she's not on she, she's not in chicago med anymore was she back or was it just like a one episode thing no, no, she was there for like a while. She was there, what, for two seasons as a recurring? Uh, no, girl, I mean, hey, hey. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, no, she was just back for one episode because they said she, she's, she's at college back east. Oh yes, they did. That freaking sucks. Yeah. See, this is why I wasn't trying to let myself get too attached this episode. No, I know. I was just like, why didn't they make her go to a, like, I didn't like that they said back east. I'm like, nah, y'all need to, y'all need to have her at some college that in California so she can drop so in, bro. Bad. Oh, gosh. And if she's not at a college in California, she better be, uh, y'all better be doing a time jump and she better be doing an internship at somebody's office, <laughs> <laughs> at somebody's, at Karen Bass's office in California. No. Y'all better come correct. Yeah. But yeah, so <laughs> Kia, but Kia comes back and um says that she was doing a talk for the students and that she was having a kickback, but she didn't know where. Um, but invites Spencer along and says she needs to find a spot. He says that they can use his house, the uh, the the James's house. And so she's like, dope, da, da, da. there is an acknowledgement. Oh, is your mom going to be okay with that? But they, they figured out this, they're good. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. At this point in time, and I understand, let me be correct. I understand why they're doing it. They're doing it to show that Spencer uh, is isolating himself from those he's closest to. And now that his worlds are so intertwined, I mean, literally, like, Patience and Coop are living at his de facto father's house, right? His their, his mansion. Um, and so I understand why they weren't at the kickback, but it was shocking that there wasn't even a line or two that was just like, you know, where's Coop and Patience? <laughs> Where's Cooper Patience from Kia? You know what I mean? I feel like, 
Yeah, I found it weird that she that they didn't even mention Coop. Patience, I didn't mind at all. Um, but the fact that Coop wasn't even mentioned, I was like, oh, hmm. I mean, but then again, but remember, Patience was still at the school. Patience, they all sort of grew up in that area. Yeah, but were her and Patience friends like that? I think so. Yeah, I I'm not so. buying that. I'm gonna say no. You don't. All right. <laughs> friends like grew up uh cuz hold on season 1 when Cooper Pages first got together wasn't she just the girl in the neighborhood who was like singing in the church perhaps but they all but they said that they but there was like an early episode in season 1 where they added that backstory that it's just like she was the girl in the neighborhood but everybody knew the girl in the neighborhood you know Yeah but I mean? she wasn't like they weren't friends friends with her at the time Okay, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't find it weird that she didn't mention patience. Um, I kind of didn't find it weird that she didn't mention Coop, but the fact that uh, this wasn't brought up by anyone, but they didn't really have that many people there, and that she didn't try to like contact Spencer or anything at all was kind of weird to me. Um, but that's about it. I mean, I've also figured that they had other things going on with the video premiere going on i was like i'll allow it yeah yeah no no no. i i allowed it and again i think it was the vehicle that spencer is just isolating himself so he hasn't been keeping in touch with anybody is how i took that and that's why you know but i was just surprised we didn't even get to your point there wasn't even like a passing mention of at least coop of at least coop by kia um but i'm sure she she noticed like oh i know why coop not here um and why she noticed that Coop wasn't here is because Spencer out here drinking. We got Frosto back, um, and you know Frosto brings a little what is what is what are the things called? The little flask. Oh, I'm uh, like what? Has some has some liquid in it. Has some liquid in it, and even Frosto is shocked that Spencer took a drink. Um, but I also, uh, th- these are the little bits of the writing that I really appreciate it for somebody who is very a- attention to detail focused is that Frosto mentioned like, you know, p- coach's memorial wasn't the place to get into it because he came back during that mm-hmm. time, but he was just like, no, I was, I was back back, but it just wasn't the place to get into it. And I was just like, come through, Gross. come through, exactly, grow <laughs> the writers acknowledging these things. <laughs> oh my god because look they don't always do it and so when they do it i'm a little shocked sometimes i'm like oh y'all didn't let that i love that y'all didn't let that uh let that go let that drop um and so anyway obviously everybody can tell that spencer's not himself kia notices so she asks uh her uncle flip to stop by which i loved i like uh, flip brings a certain like dynamic to the, to the I like show him. that I feel like we haven't got yeah that we haven't gotten since season one and so he stops by and he said you know wherever you go you bleed those colors Spencer and I love that line I love that line um because it is true this is, I got on Spencer for this exact purpose right I was like why do you care about GAU so much You've been there Look, it's semester. true but, I knew but that is who Spencer off. is exactly and that's what I'm like he needed to hear this because it is him and it's not that I'm, it's not that I'm surprised that Sp- Flip didn't speak some sense into him, but it's just always so interesting. To your point, is that everybody is walking on eggshells around Spencer because they sense that something is different, and I feel like in times past when he would have issues. I wouldn't see this many people walking around eggshells with him, which is very interesting. Um, but what did you think about the kickback? What did you think about Spencer kicking Flip out? Uh, and then we'll get to the Jordan part. Um, the kickback, I actually liked. Okay, I'm going to have to up my rating a little bit <laughs> just because <laughs> I'm going to up it. I'll tell you, it was like a solid 10 for me. I'm not even but lying. To... Go ahead. I gave it like a 1920 starting out, but I'm a. I'm a <laughs> in all seriousness, I'm a up it to like a like a 9.5. It's very close. 9.5. I don't know if it's full 10. Total. Yeah. I'm gonna say like a 
9.75, 9.8, yeah. <laughs> stick with that um but a good chunk of what i liked from this episode was spencer in the in the house um i like the kickback all you know what i also was staring at all the people in the background watching what was going down between him and flip yeah because they don't know these people (laughs) (laughs) where y'all come from y'all don't know yo it was everyone's watching their their reaction um watching like what was going on kia's reaction to seeing like him basically kicking out her uncle you know who just came and dropped off some tacos to them i like that they had flip trying to talk to him i knew it wasn't gonna land like he would be listening you know but i knew it wasn't gonna get him to where he needed to be ultimately um but i like that it gave him just that little bit of a push frost though i didn't mind him up until what did he say the comment about um was it something like if Billy was alive or something like that? Or he's glad Billy. Thank yes. God Coach Baker ain't here. Thank God Coach Baker ain't here to see you now. Stop. I don't know. I feel like Spencer sort of needed it. I'm not I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I think Spencer needed to hear that. Not like in that way, and I don't think what Frosto said was right. But at that point, I feel like Frosto was sort of the perfect character to give Spencer the same intensity that he was giving sort of every other character at that point. Because what did he say to Kia? Oh, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this as respectfully as possible. Mind your business. Like, what? I said where? (laughs) Nah. Exactly. Yo. Telling a grown man, oh, thanks for the talk. No, it was the way he stood there, yo, with his hands behind his back, his chest all pushed out. I said, Spin, stop it. (laughs) No, Flip was looking at him like, oh, this what no, you Flip want? Flip was ready to throw down. Okay. I could not. Yo, he really was. When he said, when this man said, all he had to say was, young Spencer James. Yes. And that's the look it. on that's his it. face. I said, nah. Woo! I'm not going to have to go. Flip, it's going to be you, though, because it's his house. K- but- Literally, I was just like, I don't know, Preach. You might have to be absent a couple episodes. We might need to bring Flip back for real. For I real. could not. But I'm like, I get, like, Spencer is, he's doing a lot right now, but I get why he's doing it's get, what get, he's yeah, doing. Yeah, he's yes. grieving. He's grieving. Which is Absolutely. very understandable. Absolutely. But I was just like, it is very it's understandable. It's so crazy seeing him like this. It, it is crazy seeing him like this. And like I said, it's it's crazy seeing him like this. And it's crazy. And what I appreciated about this episode was that, to your point, it just allowed people like Flip and like Kia and like Frosto to tell him straight up. Whereas like everybody else is sort of too close to him, I feel like, right now with where they're at right now to give him the real give him the real because what did kia tell him later she was just like you know i didn't mean that as a compliment when i said you're reverting back to ninth grade spencer (laughs) and she's like she's just like you know basically telling him to deal with his grief and i it was so difficult to see spencer spiraling like this around people that like what not frosto but like around people that watched him growing up it was so difficult to watch and then his conversation with Jordan. Let's get, we've been jumping back and forth. But his conversation with Jordan, number one, in the beginning, he didn't say two words to nope. Jordan. Didn't he even acknowledge in Jordan's t- presence. He squat, yo. <laughs> and just stared. I said, yo. Yeah, didn't here. even acknowledge Jordan's presence. And then, you know, Jordan obviously was calling him all day, and we'll get to why that is. But calling him all day, only for Jordan, who was in Crenshaw working at the, the Willie's house, only to end up coming in the middle of this kickback and being like, yo, I've been, I've been hitting you up all day. Spencer being like, oh, yeah, there was just a lot going on around here. And then talking about some, take a drink. Take a drink, Have a drink. Yeah. Let's play some dominoes. You know Jordan can't play no dominoes. Get out of here. <laughs> so, um, that, that conversation, that conversation, um, but Jordan basically talks about, you know, he needed his help because there was a pu- publicity stunt. And then Spencer, oh, this was the kicker. 
Spencer saying, yeah, I heard about that. Like, cutting him off and being like, yeah, I heard something about that. <laughs> and I think that's when Jordan realized he was just like, this dude is in no type of space uh, to talk or to whatever. And so he tries to push a little bit. And then Spencer ends up being like, what did I say when you needed to leave GAU? And I said, but one of those things are not like the other. Literally, girl. <laughs> I was right there with you. I said, uh, Jordan gave you a conversation, sir. Jordan gave you a conversation. And again, of course, he's spiraling, but it doesn't make it any less hard. It doesn't make it any less hard to watch. Like, again, this was very, I don't know, difficult to watch, heavy, heavy to watch uh, Spencer spiraling like this in front of everybody. Um, but yeah, what else would any other last thoughts on Spencer Spencer in this episode? Sure. You know what happened the last time you ignored a baker's call. So the fact that <laughs> <laughs> What did somebody else say? Oh, really? <laughs> what did we learn about ignoring right, calls? <laughs> so the fact he ignored his call, he ignored Live Girls call, man. I was like, oh no, I can't take it. They're not going to die on me, though. Um, I also feel like, with, wait, are you getting to um, Jordan and Liv talking about him a little bit later, separately? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get Okay, I'm gonna I'll hold it for separate later. <laughs> uh, the last thing, the last thing on Spencer is that he saw, um, he watched the video of Coach being, na- uh, Coach Kenny being named head coach and the team celebrating, and I'm sure he saw the team's videos uh that he wasn't a part of because he asked you know for ad barnes to speed up his transfer portal stuff yeah i also think it's hitting him a little bit hard too because like jor is now back officially at gau um Mm -hmm. what he wanted originally was for him and jor to like play together um but i think now that they've lost billy and he's basically quitting on gau and trying to go somewhere else so he doesn't have to deal with the memories and just the history and everything there. Um, I think it just hurts a little as well while he's going through all of this, seeing how Jor is stepping up and how he's he's staying, you know, and that's something that Spencer wanted to do together with him. And and also and also I think that, like the depth of that relationship, but also his quest for Kenny. That too, girl. Um, Spencer has been wanting Kenny to get this job for about seven episodes now. Pushing. He was just barking and at Jordan? Kenny last week. Oh, and that Negro ain't you. Yeah, we I remember. <laughs> I guess the Negro is him. I, I guess he is yo, him. Oh my gosh, I, my mouth. I said, no, they did not have this boy just say this. <laughs> Someone did bring bring out that Darnell said a, a while back. What was it? Uh, I think it was season four. This one hard-headed Negro. I, like, I forgot about that. Say that. He did. <laughs> <laughs> but this was obviously more forceful. It was more forceful. Because it's time. backed up by so much anger. Um, exactly. <laughs> that part. That part. Um, so that was that was that on Spencer. We'll get to him with predictions. Um, Laura and dead mothering. Let me just say right now. <laughs> I was praying. I was pray. I honestly, I'm gonna tell you this. I knew Patience was gonna be one of them, but I was like praying that the other one wasn't Layla. And they they really like, right did <laughs> over a contract. Stop setting my good sis yeah. up, okay? Stop setting her up because we already know this girl Patience. She complains about everything, like <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, and to that point, to that point, to that point, I'm not on their side. I'm not on their side. Let me be clear about that now, but. But once again, Layla has an actual reason to be annoyed. <laughs> Layla has an actual reason to be annoyed. Whereas Patience, talking about some coats, talking about some hoodies, talking about some I'm cold. Yo, I'm cold. She, they had this girl come up in a puffer coat while this girl Layla is in a halter top. So, and they added up. Like... It and that's the thing is just like the you know again everybody's everybody's human at some point or whatever so like throwing away contracts is a kind of a big deal like they 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 need that or whatever 
But so it's like the immediacy of that moment. And actually, I don't know if people paid attention to the um, like the dialogue under the dialogue, um, because when 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 Coop, uh, when Coop, Patience and Layla are having that conversation Layla says something about like it's not it's not that bad I just needed this contract mm-hmm. or whatever da, 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 da. and so I look at least I was thankful that they had Patience being the one driving this it's like Patience you have nothing to complain about rent free rent free rent freaking free everybody is <sighs> don't get me started on Patience and her laziness all right don't don't leave. but the fact that patience was the one that first said oh we need to talk about mrs baker like no you don't no you don't no you don't no, you don't layla you better pick up them contracts from the trash can and keep it pushing <laughs> oh my god and i think the it's not even necessarily the uh that conversation taking place like we're the audience so we're seeing everything i didn't i didn't care as much as they had that conversation amongst the three of them whatever get out your frustrations don't bring that to laura uh which they did it which they did it but here is the actual reason that i that was a problem they then brought it to live also grieving they then brought it to live also grieving and i'm like Yo, <laughs> you you bring it to a girl who's grieving because you want her to bring up this issue that you're having to her mom who's grieving. Like I, exactly. I love Layla, like, girl. That's like, my girl. I love her down, but uh, <laughs> I was like, if you don't pick up them contracts and keep it pushing, the contracts, I'm like, girl, I get it. You know, it's an important document that you need, but email does exist like can they not you can't just let them know that you lost it or something and you need a replacement can't they email you a new one that part that part i was about to make a joke but i was like it's too soon it's too soon so i'm not gonna make the joke (laughs) i was just like clearly look the past couple of weeks layla ain't been getting sleep (laughs) she missed up (laughs) she missed she been up at 3 a.m she well not her man needs her. Shut <laughs> She been putting in that double overtime, so now she's like worried about the contract. Right downstairs and upstairs. But patience, you ain't been nowhere. Like you of all people don't got nothing to say. Yes. Go look in the coat closet. She acting like it's so harsh. Just look around the house. You lucky you got a house this big. That part. Ex- oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So yeah, that is the reason why I was so upset is because not that they had the conversation again, because whatever, they're human, they're whatever, they're going to be annoyed, but that they, and I mean a little bit because they had the conversation, but again, because it like went through the channels and went to live. But as annoying as it was, as annoying as it was to watch that, uh, to watch that storyline happen, um, the storyline was necessary. I, it was a necessary growth point for Laura on her grieving journey because to get to the, uh, to get to the part where, you know, obviously patience is just as a spa day, whatever, but to get to the part where Laura and Liv had a conversation. Oh, wait, wait, wait. And the spa day thing. Yeah. <laughs> When yeah. she told them that she wanted to have it, and this girl Coop talking about how she didn't want to get no massage from so uh, by some guy, how she just assumed it was a guy. Granted, it did turn out to be a guy, but the fact that they made her just assume it was going to be a guy. That's true. And here's the other thing: I'm not. I will never get my foot off of Coop's neck. I don't care if she was good in this episode. She was a good egg. Sure, whatever. Congrats. But the only reason, the she only, let, free let us not pretend it uh, rent free. And what the Lord just do for her? Got her out of a parking ticket. One paying the bills up in there. She ain't going to sit here and cross her. Exactly. Let's not. I'm like. Let's not act she like uh, own, Coop wasn't yeah, screaming. She Screaming wasn't talk about something. I knew I should have gotten another lawyer. Like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yo. 
<laughs> like I'm not taking I'm not I'm not like Coop gets like some credit for that but I don't know I'm like if she didn't get her out of that parking ticket that day I can't say nothing about Coop would have been in that Whatever. conversation so helps Coop. Coop feel and look better is what Coop will do if it doesn't benefit her exactly. she is not going to include herself that part if it does not benefit her and in this situation being on that side it did not, not. That is the <laughs> only reason the only reason she wasn't there somebody <laughs> Shout out to uh, shout out to to Kimberly. She was just like, she was like, um, Coop's been on thin ice at this house the whole time. Exactly. <laughs> she said, Dad, I just got back on good terms with the daughter. I'm definitely not gonna cross Mama Laura." That part, that part. So, Coop didn't have the Coop didn't have a leg to stand on if she was on that side. Um, <laughs> the writers were like, "Who has goodwill? Who could who could be annoyed?" I'm like, "Nope, don't nope, don't do it. It's too soon. It's too soon." Um. So anyway, that conversation that Laura and Liv had. Um. <laughs> let's bring up the funny part first, slash the uncomfortable <laughs> part. Then we'll get to the meat of the conversation. Uh. I was just like, this is one of the most uncomfortable conversations ever. Because don't not even as take hearing. Me there. Don't even take me there. <laughs> <laughs> you want to save it? You want to save it to when we get talk about nah, that? I'll save it to you when we it. talk about that. We, we don't need this included over there. <laughs> <laughs> we already have 50 minutes. So not freaking Coop. I mean the Coop. Oh, that girl was on my mind. Not, um them having this conversation and Liv starts off with saying, you know, you know, you don't have to. And I think this was so important for, for Laura to hear as well. Like you don't have to take care of us. Um, you don't have to take care of us. You can just be a roommate. And so she was just like, yeah, I have been surprisingly cool about Jordan coming down from Layla's room, chugging, glasses of water like he just got in from a Girl. and I'm like what I'm uncomfortable I <laughs> I'm uncomfortable I don't I'm like it pineapples wait, pine- <laughs> I wasn't ready <laughs> I wasn't ready pineapples pineapples said, hold on because I'm all in my as soon as she said I said whoa wait but then are you just sitting downstairs? She's probably sitting on the couch crying to herself, which is how she be seeing him. I'm like, stop! <laughs> Could you imagine you're sitting down there crying? Flag what? on the you're play. Sitting, Flag on the play. You're sitting downstairs crying over your dead husband, bawling your eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> and you see your son skipping down the steps. <laughs> Yo, to come chug Bruh. some water. Happy, happy as can be imagine like wait did he just lose his dad or not mama look she she stop, knows stop stop flag on the play she knows what's up she knows what's up with them i said wow this I is mean, awkward everybody knows what's up with them after coop's comments so the last awkward. episode yeah but now they got her living here's... through it now they got her living through it and uh, all right i'm gonna I'm get back no i'm gonna talk about it right now because it's just like so I was just like, and Liv being like, oh yeah, I it's taken me a bit to get used. Like I, I, I I'm still getting used to her too, or some, whatever she said. I was just like, were they just like more careful before they were out, and now and now Jordan see, just okay, doesn't care wait, anymore. No, like, what no, is, no. What is go- I feel I see when uh, Liv said that. I felt like her comment was more so getting used to them being together. I don't think it was in the same way as um, Mama Laura's <laughs> comment. I took hers chugging water. Water. I took hers as um, like knowing that they're together now officially. And she, when she went to them, when she was having her issues last week, like she went and found both of them in in their room. So I think it's her just knowing that they're together and knowing that they're like they're always sleeping together. He lives there now with Lele girl. That is so funny. That is. She be hearing them like the other one. So. <laughs> The other thing is, and we'll get back to this more in depth, but I'm going to say this and then we'll move on to what Laura and Liv's conversation was. Um, it's like we can get them talking about this, but we couldn't get their like 
true reactions or whatever are like sitting in their reactions you know what i mean like why are we having this conversation <laughs> and we didn't even get a solo lore reaction like the camera something that bugged me that i realized about last week's episode the camera literally rested on grace's realization exactly. and we didn't even I get said, that turn around we Laura. don't care <laughs> purpose grace grace entering this conversation like no why am i in it i do nothing yeah exactly why are you here you don't know them (laughs) (laughs) but it's just like it's really odd to see them talk about this again when we didn't even get that full like that full uh i'm gonna take the smile that they gave me from mama laura i will take the smile I'll, I'll take it but like would it have been nice to see something uh something more dedicated to her individually yeah. yes and now we're just getting a solo conversation i'm hoping i'll hope that she's gonna talk about it later <laughs> but that's what i'm saying i'm like this is not, when we wanted them to talk about it this is not the conversation we wanted them to have is basically I mean, girl we wanted me, a lot for me, we wanted a lot <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did we the really like, hey. did we were expecting a lot <laughs> I've been planning for months. Anyway. Oh my gosh. So um that was that and Liv ends up saying like Liv ends up saying so like yeah uh obviously that's taken me a second to get used to too but um that's not necessarily what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you know like bagging up clothes and putting it in closets and you know like um throwing away mail and waking me up you know like I'm in junior high and it was so interesting and I think Monet played this so well but it was like she didn't even realize that she was doing it like when Liv brought it up and it was just like a moment of realization for her where she was just like she was almost like on autopilot Mm -hmm. uh and I was just like oh my gosh this is such a heartbreaking moment. I don't know. I just love the way that Monet played that. She was just like, wow, I didn't, I didn't even realize that I was doing that. And she was like, oh, I'm sorry. And then later they have this conversation. And before they go meet up with the rest of the girls, uh, Laura was just like, you know, about our conversation earlier. And Liv, and this is <laughs> was just like, why did you bring this to Liv? But Liv She's was like, just like, I know no, it was no, no. like so... <laughs> literally she was just like I, I it was so stupid to even bring up and like I, i'm so sorry and and things like that and laura was just like no i realized that i wasn't mothering you i was wiping <laughs> <Sorry>. you <laughs> she was like those are the things i used to do for your i used to do for your dad and then Liv goes wait so you were wiping us i, I love it I I loved and like here's the thing Sam is such an un I I feel like most of these most of the the women on the show just because they don't you know except for like Coop they don't really let them be like comedic like that um and I just have literally missed so much like Liv just being so quick with her responses (laughs) and so to get that again was like a wonderful thing to see oh so you were wifing us (laughs) it's just hilarious she's just like i you know i realize that it's part of my morning routine that like the only part of my morning routine i can do and you know journaling something that i'd done that i'd done even before i met your dad um i haven't been able to to journal again uh and it was just i don't know this is this really nice conversation uh where Liv is like they're talking about it and she's just like you know you know the day was good it was a good day the last day that you entered your journal you know the day that dad died but you know I think he would want you to turn the page yes flip it mama lord flip it flip it and it the thing is is just like so yes this came from a point of, of annoyance for the audience to see them bringing up this point but it was really 
crucial and also Liv had a com- I mean Laura had a conversation with Jordan that also helped her recognize that she was holding on to old routines for just the f- sake of holding mm-hmm. on to them just the sake of ho- trying to hold on to a piece of Billy in that you know this was something that she didn't need to do so I actually really like even though it frustrated me I, I love this for Laura and I I I have I've really loved the story that they've been telling with Laura. It's been it's been so quietly good and I think it's been so underrated, like just this whole grieving process that they've had Laura go through. So props to them. Shout out to them. Shout out to them. And then at the end of the day, like she's dancing around the room with Liv uh with Liv Patience and Coop. And she dances around the room after she writes in her journal that today was a good day. Um, so yeah, so yeah, that was that was special. You know what I realized with uh, so, the combo with her and Liv, girl, mm-hmm. the forehead touch. He used to do it with his mama. I know. She did it to Liv, girl too. I was like, so wait, with with Jordan, she she did, she did the forehead touch with Liv too. I missed to that. Go, like, they kiss first. I think she was gonna like do a little smooch kiss on the side of her face, and then their heads just rested right after she did it with their foreheads touching to the side. I was like, look at that. he got it from his mama. I love it. The woman he I loves. Love I love it. I love that it. They, uh, oh. Also, because Mama Laura, like, she's still grieving. It's not like she got everything worked out in her episode a couple weeks ago. <laughs> that's what i'm that's what i'm saying we've really watched her go on a journey of like and and that's what i really appreciate it and that's again that's why i love this episode so much i think this was such a good storyline to tell and it hit the right beats like we were supposed to be annoyed at the girls like we were supposed to be uh and we were supposed to see laura go through this journey so i really yeah i really loved it i really loved it um so Laura and her son Laura and Jordan and these voids holes and spaces had to cut it right there but thanks for listening to film study and all-american universe podcast and stay tuned for part two